Biting can be one of the most aggravating parts about raising a puppy. It feels so personal sometimes, but your dog really means no harm. Or does he? A lot of dog owners ask me, my dog is biting me. Is this normal? Is he aggressive? And there's not really a yes or no answer to that unless we get into a lot more detail. So today I'm going to get into a lot more detail. Now I'm going to go over several different biting case studies with dogs of different ages. We're going to break down when the biting is happening and what you should do about it. And I'll tell you if it's normal or if it's a sign that you have something more serious going on. Think of today's video like you're eavesdropping in on a private lesson with my students. You're gonna love it. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now, I've been working as a certified trainer for over 20 years, and I'm pretty good at knowing what dog owners want and need to hear. So I suggest you subscribe to this channel so you can keep getting all the great content. Just hit that bell. All right, let's talk about our first scenario. We're gonna hear from Riley. She's got a question about Almond, an eight week old puppy. Hey Michelle, my puppy Almond came home this past weekend and she is using her mouth for everything. I even can't pet her. She bites me every time when I'm trying to bring my hands towards her. My family and I just wanted to cuddle with our new puppy, but that's what's not happening. There's so many things that I have pulled out from her mouth recently both from inside and outside. Even when I try to bring her toys to put in her mouth, she will drop a toy, go for my shoe or something on the ground. Okay, let's break this down. Let's remind ourselves of the details. Almond is an eight week old and she just came home. Those are two significant clues that will play a part in how we go about addressing this. So Riley said that Almond is using her mouth for everything. Well, that's exactly right. And this is entirely appropriate for her age. She's in the socialization phase of her life. Now you probably heard that word and thought, well, what does socialization have to do with a fluffy crocodile that I just brought home? Don't think of socialization as my puppy needs to meet every person and dog, but rather as socialization to the world. Now, another way we can view socialization is an exploratory or a curiosity phase. So let's try to view things from the almond perspective. She's been dragged down into this new world. She doesn't know many things, but wants to figure it out. She can't be taught in a verbal way like we can. So she's gonna have to learn things in her way by exploring. Now this mouthy behavior is exactly that. She's learning about the world. The good news is that Riley may have a confident puppy on her hands. Curiosity is a good thing. Now. That's all fine and good, but Riley may be wondering why she's so interested in things that aren't her toys. Well, Almond doesn't know what's a toy and what's not a toy. She's interested in everything. Almond's probably more interested in new things. She's interested in things that smell good and are associated with good things. I'm talking about you, Riley. You are the source of the love and the food and the good things like play and snuggles. So you're naturally more interesting to her and she just wants to explore you. Oh, and you do carry a lot of interesting scent that keeps changing. You're the perfect chew toy. All right, let's talk about how to help Riley and Almond. Number one, at this stage, we need a lot of puppy proofing, a lot of it. I'm talking baby gates, play pens, leashes, blocking off entire areas of the house. Now I got a bunch of great advice on puppy proofing in this video, thanks to some of the puppy parents from my Facebook group. You're gonna get a lot of these ideas for how to make it work in your home too. Now, next, I think all men need some structure and focus outside, so she doesn't keep putting everything in her mouth. Now this means that outside time should be done with the right amount of puppy proofing in the yard. It should be done on a leash and in short increments. Think of this like taking a small child to an antique store. You're watching carefully and you're putting some management tools in place like holding the child's hand and letting the child know what is okay to touch and what is not. This is Riley's job while Almond is outside. Now I also want to tell Riley to stop reaching for Almond because Almond keeps responding with her mouth. Now, if Riley continues to do this, Almond's gonna quickly learn that hand equals bite. So Riley, instead of picking her up, call her to you. Instead of reaching out to her, invite her to come to you. You could even learn the bump it game from my online course, which is usually a great alternative to bite. Bump it, Almond, don't bite it. The more Riley plays some fun games with her hands where you teach her what you do want, the better this is gonna go. The collar grab is another good game because 
It makes a positive association about hands reaching to the dog and teaches Allman to stay calm and relaxed when it happens. Check out the link below to learn more about those great games in my online course. One final tip for Riley, help Allman become more interested in her toys by letting her run after them or chase them, or stick some of her toys in a food bin overnight so they smell and taste like kibble. Now you wanna make those toys as interesting as you are, and that means interesting smells and movements. So bottom line here is, that this biting from almond is entirely normal and has a lot to do with her learning about the environment. And if she's biting someone in particular, it just means that person holds a lot of value to her. I bet Riley wishes almond didn't love her quite so much, right? Riley, this does get better with time and training, so stick with it and you will get there. All right, let's see who else has a question. Richard. Richard has a question about Pippin, who is about 16 weeks old. Hi, how to train a dream dog team? Here's my question. I thought we had the puppy biting under control, but all of a sudden it's gotten much worse. Pippin beat me on my leg and made me bleed today. I remember when she first came home, we put all of this puppy proofing in place and it worked really well. However, even walks are difficult now. If she's not biting the leash, she's biting my legs, she's biting my pants. So what should I do? Okay, so let's break this down and try to help Richard and Pippin. All right, at this age, we can pretty much assume that Pippin has likely started teething. Yay! <laughs> you might remember from this video that puppies have a lot of teeth movement in their mouth in a much shorter time frame than humans. Puppies get their first set of teeth, lose them, and grow their second set all within the first year. Humans take 20 or more years to do this. Richard can check to see if Pippin is teething when they are at their next vet appointment. Now, since puppies usually get their rabies shot at this age, Richard can ask the veterinarian to check inside of Pippin's mouth. During this phase, ropes and tough plush toys will be a great option for Pippin. Now, you can even wet these toys and stick them in the freezer overnight to help soothe sore gums. One piece of advice though, do not use a washcloth or a towel. I know you've probably heard that suggestion, but these items are not safe for your dog to chew. Use only dog toys for this purpose. They've been made and reinforced for strong jaws. And of course, watch chewing carefully and remove the toy if it becomes a hazard. Now, if Richard looks in Pippin's mouth and doesn't find teeth ready to come out, or maybe some spaces where they've been, this is not a cause for alarm. It's completely harmless if Pippin swallows her own teeth. And if you have a puppy at Pippin's age, you're gonna wanna have a great variety of teething toys. Chewing toy examples are things like Nyla Bones, Kongs, Westpaw Topples, and Benabones. Give those a try, Richard. If Pippin gets tired of these, fill a small container with bone broth, then dip the toys in enough to get a nice coat. Place them on a cookie sheet in the freezer overnight. These make them taste really good and will encourage chewing. And if any of my viewers are going to try this, make sure to do a review on the ingredients of that bone broth. You want no extra ingredients that are harmful to your puppy like onion or garlic. Richard can also change up that filling in the Kongs and the Westpaw Topples, since novelty may pique Pippin's interest in these toys. This video here shares some of my favorites for Kong fillers, but Pippin's taste might be different. Have a taste test and see what she likes. Now, Richard, I want you to keep in mind that puppies are a bit more confident at this age, so it's important to make sure that Pippin's emotional cup is filled with solid enrichment. So build a plan using some ideas in this video. Now, Pippin should also be sleeping the appropriate amount for her age. If sleep seems to be disrupted, this could be due to the pain of teething. Try to have patience and offer her things to soothe her sore gums, and be sure she gets plenty of naps when she seems sleepy or extra bitey. Richard might see a little more interruption at night during this time as well, even if she's used to sleeping through the night just fine. This phase will pass, and it's important to help her be as comfortable as possible. Now here's a tip, especially for you, Richard. Be sure to recruit other people in the family to share this load. This is a challenging time for you and Pippin. You're gonna to wanna to take time off for yourself and have other people work with Pippin when you need a break. Just be sure all family members are using the same approach and following these good suggestions. Now the final answer from the certified trainer is that Pippin is very normal and this is the standard puppy behavior for this age. Okay. Are you ready to learn from Linda in Wally? Hi Michelle, my question is about Wally, who is a six month old. He's been a perfect angel these last few months and he hasn't been biting me even though I found a few of his puppy teeth. He also hasn't chewed a single thing he wasn't supposed to, so I put a bed in his crate. It was fine for a while and then suddenly he chewed it last night. Where did this come from? I went to my sister's house last week and her dog likes to pull all the stuffing out of his toys. 
Do you think Wally learned this from him? Also, Wally bit my sister's hand when she went to pet him. He even started biting my hand when I tried to redirect him from biting on my sister. What happened to my sweet puppy? Ooh, okay, this is a double one. So we've got some destruction of bedding, and then we've got some strong reaction from Wally while at the new place. And there was even a bite. Let's talk about all of these things. First, I would suggest removing all plush toys, blankets, and beds from Wally's crate. If he's chewing any of these things outside of his crate, make sure that he's not swallowing any pieces. Now, the part about not seeing teeth is pretty normal. At six months old, Wally's still teething, but it's likely no longer about losing teeth. So at this age, his teeth are shifting around in his mouth to find their permanent position. So this process can be very painful, and Wally likely has some soreness occurring within his mouth. Now he still needs teething toys, but especially those frozen toys now. Linda, keep them on rotation in your fridge. All right, just like with Almond, I suggest that Linda teach Wally what she wants him to do with his mouth. The bumping game would be a great idea here too. Now, regarding Linda's sister and the bite, well, it's really hard to know exactly what's going on. To truly give advice on this situation, I need to know a lot more. But one thing that comes to mind is that Wally might have been very overstimulated in this environment. Coupled with a sore mouth, Wally probably just had no more capacity to deal with it all. You moms out there know this feeling. Now, a new home, another dog, and a sore mouth? Sounds like a little too much for a puppy. So, just like I advised Richard to help Pippin feel more comfortable, Linda's gonna need to advocate for Wally and make sure this stress level doesn't get too high. Now, it's also possible that Linda's sister didn't quite heed Wally's warning signals. Most dogs don't love being petted over the top of their head. It's a much more friendly approach to teach people where Wally enjoys being petted. I actually suggest petting the chest area, and I also recommend keeping these interactions short and sweet to ensure success. Now, I really can't say for sure, but I'm guessing that Wally was just overstimulated at the sister's house, which led to the bite. We call that trigger stacking, and it often occurs that the dog is uncomfortable in a situation and more discomfort gets added on. Now, it doesn't sound like aggression to me. You have to look very closely at the environment in these situations, and it sounds to me like the environment led to his reaction. Linda, I would advise you to keep Wally's world a little less exciting and make sure you add in lots of decompression walks. I also want to remind you that Wally is going through adolescence. This is a very common age for pups to end up in shelters. Not that you will do that, but just to let you know that this age can be very frustrating. The normal young puppy compliance has been replaced with more energy, more confidence about the world, and more curiosity. Not all hope is lost. You still have your sweet puppy. He just needs to have a little refresher on the training that he knew before. So, Linda. Get back to the basic training games you and Wally have enjoyed in the past and work back up so they are solid in his memory. Once again, this is a very normal behavior for a puppy of his age in this environment. Linda can definitely work on it, but it's not a cause for alarm and it's gonna work itself out with time and training. All right, we've got time for one more question, but before we do, I just wanna give you this opportunity to show how much you love all this great content. It actually takes a lot for me and my team to produce these kinds of videos for you each week. If you like what you're seeing and you're hearing, please consider a small little tip with the thanks button below. Okay, this is Eric and he's got a question about Mac, who's eight months old. I thought that biting would go away when my puppy, Mac, was done teething, but he's still doing it. It's been months and months of biting and attacking and me redirecting to a toy, but it's still the same old thing. I really need help. Okay, Eric, I get it. Sometimes we see this when the biting has become a habit. That happens where there's a lot of horse playing around and he's been encouraged to use his mouth during his play with the humans. Now, this also happens when he gets a lot of attention for the behavior, like continued play. So even though that biting only took place during the play, it's still a habit. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going on here, but that would be one of my first questions for Eric. How much playing with his mouth is he doing? Due to the age of Mac and how long this has been going on, this is actually a case for trainer intervention. I say that also because teething is really wrapped up by eight months of age, so we probably can't attribute the behavior to mouth soreness. Now a trainer is gonna need to evaluate the puppy's schedule 
and what it is that the human's doing that may be accidentally encouraging the biting. Unfortunately, the training industry is not well regulated and you have to do your research just to make sure the trainer uses fear-free and positive methods based in behavioral science. Now I'm gonna share a link to a directory that might be helpful. You can either grab a screenshot or check it out in the description below. Now I'm sorry I can't help Eric more as part of today's video, but there's only so much we can do with the limited information we receive. And due to Mac's age, this tells me that there's a history of things we have to take into account and develop a training plan for them. It wouldn't be right of me to just give advice when I don't know the whole picture. But you can see that this is a case where Eric should escalate to a professional. Now the first three cases we talked about today are things we can help with as part of our pro level of the online course. We can evaluate the environment and the schedule and the training and get you going with some helpful activities that will help diminish that biting. Now as for Eric, he would be better off calling a behaviorist. Okay, so did you learn something today? Do you wish that I was able to take your question about biting or some other unwanted behavior? Well, we do help students with all kinds of things, including leash skills and door manners, counter surfing, healthy play dates, and more. So just check out the course. All right, I hope today's video was helpful. I'd love to hear from you if it was in the comments below. Tell me the age of your dog and on a scale of one to 10, how bad is the biting? 